Here are a few of the coolest things you can experience in Japan. Number 10. Robot Restaurant Japan has a lot of strange attractions to offer, and the robot restaurant in Tokyo is no exception. Probably one of the most popular tourist destinations in Tokyo, the robot restaurant is located in the Shinjuku Nightlife District, and it definitely hosts one of the more interesting shows on Earth. A $73 ticket gets you dinosaurs, laser lights, a cabaret, and, as the name might suggest, robots. Lots and lots of robots. Once you go down the Technicolor stairwell into the robot restaurant, it's almost like stepping into a futuristic alternate reality. And it only gets wackier with each step. For example, you'll hear blaring pop music, see warrior princesses fight 10-foot-tall Transformer robots, and see laser beams bouncing off sequenced bikinis. The robot show might sound and look like total chaos, but the high-voltage performance is actually a carefully crafted routine that requires weeks of preparation. In fact, every performer is part of a professional dance group who have perfected the complicated routine. They master everything from dancing to drumming and pole dancing to, um, robot riding. Number 9. Unison Spa Resort Many countries are known for their traditional bathhouses and hot springs, but the Unison Spa Resort in Japan has taken the plunge to offer an incredibly unique bathing experience. Set at the foot of lush green mountains, the spa, or really, we call it a theme park, in Japan's Hakone Prefecture offers all your typical spa amenities, but with a twist. In addition to the ancient Roman bath and the massive gods agency, the Unison Spa Resort sets itself apart with its drink-themed attractions. Have you ever wanted to bathe in a literal pool of tea? You can here with the Green Tea Spa. The resort also features a red wine spa, a Japanese sake spa, a coffee spa, and for all the ramen lovers out there, a pepper water-filled ramen noodle spa. More than just scented and colored water, these pools are filled with the actual drinks. The coffee is brewed in pots and poured into the pool by the barrel. The sake and wine baths could even get someone drunk, though obviously drinking any of these waters isn't allowed. Each themed bath also features oversized drink containers associated with it. For example, the wine bath comes from a giant wine bottle, and massive fake noodles hang over the ramen pool. Number 8. Square Watermelon when someone mentions a watermelon, you usually picture a round one, right? Well, in Japan, square watermelons are common, and they're usually very expensive. And it's not just in Japan, it's other places too. Back in 2013, people shopping at fancy supermarkets in Russia were cashing out $700 to over $800 for a single watermelon. However, the square watermelons began in Japan out of necessity. They're more than just a novelty. A giant round watermelon is hard to store and awkward to cut, but square watermelons can be tucked away much more easily in the small refrigerators in Japan. If you're thinking that square watermelons are genetically modified, think again. The magic happens by way of a rather simple method. Melons are trained into square submission by being placed in boxes while they grow to maturity. Pretty easy, right? Number 7. Real Life Mario Kart Unless you live under a rock, you probably know the Mario franchise. Whether you played Mario Kart on the N64 or the Wii, trying it in real life is something you can do in Japan. Using custom-built go-karts, Mari Kart is the hot ticket in the real-life Mario Kart craze in Tokyo. They're a local company offering you the opportunity to drive through the city just like you would in the Mario Kart games. All you need is one of the approved driving licenses and you're ready to race. Before scorching the tarmac, you stash your belongings in a locker and change into a costume, which is included in the price. With a wide variety of courses to choose from, you can drive pretty much anywhere in the city that you'd like. Most carts are fitted with GPS and communication bands and you'll be following a guide at all times, 
so you won't need to worry about taking a wrong turn. Mari car rentals also typically include a face guard mask, a pair of shades, and a helmet, plus your favorite costume. If you're feeling really fancy, you can even rent LED shoes, a Bluetooth speaker, or a 4K action camera. And oh yeah, there are also fake mustaches involved. Number 6. Aquarium Phone Booths Remember telephone booths? You know, the ones people used to make calls back in the day? Obviously, they're pretty much a thing of the past, but across Osaka, old phone booths have been brought back to life and turned into aquariums with live goldfish. That's one way to put obsolete things back to use. These aquarium phone booths started mysteriously popping up all over Osaka. Then it was revealed that an art group called King Yobu, or Goldfish Club, was responsible for this unique project. Ever since the 17th century, goldfish have become a national symbol in Japan. In Japanese culture, the goldfish is often seen as a symbol of good luck, happiness, and prosperity. In addition to the good fortune brought by seeing all these goldfish around, the aquariums have served as a nostalgic art piece. Apparently, many people were reminded of goldfish scooping, a very popular game Japanese people played growing up. The game is played exactly the way it sounds, by scooping goldfish from a pool with a paper cup called a poi, and then putting them into a bowl. Since the poi can tear easily, it's quite a challenge to be able to scoop out more than a few fish. Number 5. Don Quixote Don Quixote is a famous chain store that's also known simply as Donke in Japan. The chain store opened in 1989 in Japan and is known for being a one-stop convenience discount store that essentially has everything and everything you need. The Donke stores are open until practically the break of dawn, with some stores even remaining open 24 hours. Donkey stores carry anything you could possibly think of, from food to alcohol to Gucci purses, and so much more. It's also a hotspot for tourists because they sell a lot of interesting souvenirs. All of the store's products are packed from floor to ceiling in a distinct merchandising strategy. The chain currently owns 350 stores in total, with sales revenue of up to $10 billion in Japan. Only four stores out of the 350 total are located outside of Japan, with three in Hawaii and one in Singapore. If you're ever in Japan, it's definitely a place to experience. Number 4. Harajuku If you're into crazy fashion, then Harajuku is the place for you. Harajuku is the home of Japan's wildest fashion trends. Many people dedicate their entire wardrobes to the unique styles of the area's subcultures. Harajuku really becomes magical on Sundays. People walk around in 18th century style French dresses, visual K punk rock glam, and some people even cosplay their favorite anime characters or dance to 1950s American rock music. Really, anything goes, as long as it's cool. The Kawaii Monster Cafe in Harajuku might give the robot restaurant a run for its money. With stunning surroundings, bizarre food, and entrancing performances, you can take a step into the mouth of the chopstick monster and enter a psychedelic reality that's the stomach of Harajuku. Staff members encourage you to explore the four different zones between drinks. Although the place isn't huge, each zone is so trippy, it feels like you could easily get lost. The cafe stays true to the Harajuku vibe, with crazy color and flavor combinations that reflect the general madness of Harajuku. Chocolate chicken and rainbow painter spaghetti are just a few of these menu items. Wherever you find yourself in Harajuku, it'll essentially be a new experience. Number 3. Ghibli Museum The Ghibli Museum showcases the work of the Japanese animation studio, Studio Ghibli. Located in the Inokashira Park in Mitaka, a western city of Tokyo, the museum combines features of all different types of museums and is completely dedicated to the complex art and technique of animation. Studio Ghibli director Hayao Miyazaki designed the museum himself. The design was influenced by European architecture such as the hilltop village of Calcutta in Italy. Walk inside and you'll step into a different world filled with iron spiral staircases, inner bridges, 
and balconies stretching throughout the building's height. Miyazaki's aim was to make the building itself part of the exhibit. The museum's slogan is, let's get lost together, encouraging you to unplug and experience this alternate reality to the fullest. Because of this, you're not allowed to take pictures or record inside the museum. Miyazaki truly wants you to experience the museum by seeing it for yourself. The Ghibli clock is another masterpiece by Miyazaki. It's a huge clock that offers performances several times per day. The clock is made out of over 20 tons of copper and steel. It's three stories high and 60 feet wide. Besides chiming out the time, there are over 30 mechanical vignettes at certain hours, including cannons, a couple of blacksmiths, a wheel spinner, and a boiling teapot. All of that makes this masterpiece one giant cuckoo clock, and honestly, we expect nothing less from such a renowned animation studio. Number 2. Pod Hotels If you find yourself in Japan looking for a cheap and unique place to stay, then a pod hotel just might be for you. Pod hotels, sometimes known as capsule hotels, began in Osaka. Basically, guests cozy up in a tiny guest room made out of a modular plastic or fiberglass block measuring about 6.5 feet long, 3 feet high, and 4 feet wide. The pods are stacked side by side in one big open area 2 units high, with steps leading to the second level rooms, if you want to call it that. Looking for a little privacy? Just close the end of the capsule. The going rate for pod hotels is a steal for Japan at only $30 to $50 a night, depending on the hotel. Despite their small size, most pods include a TV, an electronic console, and wireless internet connection. One thing to keep in mind though, the walls are pretty thin, so being a courteous pod neighbor is a requirement. Japanese pod hotels actually have not had the greatest of reputations around the world. Often located in nightlife hubs, the coffin-sized sleep spaces are notoriously frequented by drunken Japanese people who missed the last train home. But now, a new kind of stylish pod hotel is popping up all over Japan. Combining essential functionality with style, they attract everyone from local business people to foreign hipsters looking for an adventure. Luxurious pod hotels aim to create the feeling of flying first class. On the ground, of course. Number 1. Nagashi Somen Hot summer days call for water sports. And while most countries might think of water polo or swimming, Japanese families cool down with an aquatic game called Nagashi Somen. The name translates to flowing noodles and involves being very skillful with somen, the thin wheat noodle traditionally eaten ice cold. In this case, being very skillful means that you need to catch the somen as it flows past you on the water slide made of bamboo using chopsticks. Seriously. To make the water slide, families split the bamboo reeds in half and prop them up like slides in their backyards. A hose is placed at one end of the slide and handfuls of somen are dropped into the water. Then someone yells, Ikuyo! as the noodles shoot forward while everyone attempts to catch their dinner with chopsticks. If you're skilled enough to fill a bowl with noodles, you're rewarded with some additional yummy ingredients such as fresh cucumbers, tomatoes, scallions, ginger, and shrimp, all topped with a tsuyu, a condiment made of shoyu and dashi. Consider yourself lucky if you're invited to play this game by a Japanese family. Here's Obviously, what's next. if you're polite with your tour guides and at least pretend to make friends with them, they'll most likely relax and let you do a bit more, instead of watching over you like hawks. There are certain places that are held sacred by North Koreans and they'll bow before statues and such. If tourists are uncomfortable doing this kind of thing, they should let their guides know in advance and then ask themselves why on earth did they decide to go 